Today on Country Squire Radio, it's a Here's what we're looking at now. As you can see, I've been getting some stuff done. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Food Theory. From the premier source of Pipe and Tobacco News, it's Briar Report. Tonight on Syndicated Pipe Club, we're talking Flash Season 7 trailer along with a few things that are connected to the Flash and whatnot. That's right, we're going back to our roots and re-entering Flash time. Hey, I'm Dr. Allen, the speedster pirate of the Sea of Thieves, but you can call me Dave. And coming out of the Speed Force, our good, good friend, Greg the Scarlet Piper. How are you doing tonight, Greg? I am here. How about you? I am also here. Just getting at least ready to... until yeah, at least until we're uh, recast. Yes, at least until we're recast, and maybe even if Barry, you know, runs back in time again. And I mean, we're pulling that. We're we're going Flash again. We haven't done that for a while. Of course, there hasn't really been much in the way of new Flash to talk about, anyway. Right. I saw that uh, uh, returning in twenty twenty one. And it's just like, oh man, so much stuff has been just ruined <laughs> this year. Uh, it's uh, unfortunate to see. But is it really returning in 2021? Is it? We shall see. It's we too only it, hope. It's too ambiguous, and with with the way things things are going, I mean, yeah, yeah, I could see him coming back in 2021, but. You know, if something goes wrong, if Vancouver, where the Flash is shot, gets a, another another huge wave, or, you know, restrictions, you know, uh, take out the possibility of those grand, you know, outdoor shots that they rely on when they're doing certain things, certain scenes, it may, may be a little bit longer. Yeah. You have to feel for a show like Supernatural, which uh, is supposed to be over with, but... Uh... Due to COVID shutting everything down, I think that we kind of extended their their stay on the show. Yeah, it, it's just one of those things, you know. Things happen. We're not prepared for them, and uh, well, we get ambiguous return dates. Right. Really, the smartest one of them all was a. Uh, Stephen Amell uh, getting out of uh, the Arrow when he did. Could you imagine them saving his death for uh, like a full season of Arrow? <laughs> yeah. I bet he was so relieved that they only did a half season that year, last year for, for the Arrow, just to get to Crisis and that he was done after that in yeah, a couple can... episodes. Oh, absolutely. So we may be going back to flash time. We may be uh, referencing old podcasts like Out of the Speed Force, which is basically yes. just this one, just rebranded. But we are still syndicated pipe club. So for tonight's episode, I am smoking this little billiard that I have no idea who made it because the name has been worn off over time. It's from the 70s-ish. Cleaned up really nice. A few uh, little imperfections in it, but it still smokes well. And in it, I'm smoking from the Country Squire, the English Blend Angry Cornishman. What do you got going on there, Greg? Looks like you switched over to a cob from the last episode yes. we recorded. Yep, this is uh, my Corn Cob Nation uh, Pipe of the Year 2019. And I am smoking uh, Corn Elm Deal's Kruner, which is a uh, specially cut cube style burley and deer tongue tobacco and uh what's notable about it is that it's an authentic copy of uh Bing crosby's private blend that he uh used to smoke and uh it was the recipe was shared to uh cnd by one of his closest friends so this is supposed to be the blend that he uh that he had and uh i can see why uh why he would do that because it's uh 
in a very interesting blend. So if you've never had deer tongue before, it can definitely uh, throw you off, but I enjoy uh, deer tongue blends. Unfortunately, I don't. I tried a deer tongue blend not that long ago and the deer tongue ruined it for me. It should have been something I enjoyed, but I wanted to I wanted to see what the deer tongue did to a blend and that's all I could taste. So right. I'm, it, I mean, it's definitely strong. And uh, it is still available for purchase. Uh, it is out of stock right now. But, uh, it is at least on smoking pipes, but uh, it's still in production as far as I know. Me too. As far as I know, they still make that one. And of course, the Country Squire still makes Angry Cornishmen because I literally, recording time, just got this a couple days ago. By the time you're watching this particular episode, yeah, it'll be about a week ago because this one, we're recording out of order. <laughs> yeah. And what, um, what style of blend is that? It's uh, one of their Englishes. Um, let me pull up the website over here on the other screen and uh, give you the rundown of it. Sure. I'm not too familiar with, uh, I I've heard their names before, but I've never, um, I, I don't know which one is which, like it, what style it is anyway. I've always wanted to try their blends, but I uh, just haven't had a chance to yet. Which I find hilarious because it's a lot harder for me to get to get the, the country swire tobaccos than you right like you're at least in the same country I have to deal with the border right well I just I haven't ordered from their site yet so oh it's easy enough uh, takes PayPal all right angry Cornishman is a full English blend according to uh, country squires website it says here, our classic English blend with an extra helping of Latakia pr providing even more robust smoke, rich velvety taste that is sure to please. And it is true, I've had Cornishman before. It was one of the first tobaccos I ordered from the Country Squire. And I would class that as a light English blend. The Latakia, extra Latakia in this does bring it up to more what you would think of as the taste of an English blend. Yeah. So definitely a full English. Not too much Latakia and it's not overpowering the blend, but it is definitely a full English. If you're not an English smoker, you won't like it. But they have a bunch of other stuff too. Lots of aromatics and whatnot. And we can talk about the Country Squire a little bit on another episode another time. Yes. The whole purpose of this episode is to talk about the Flash trailer and a few other things that are pertinent to Season 7. And for those of you who are listening via podcast, you couldn't see me doing the air quotes because really... When we do finally get Season 7, the first part of it is going to be Season 6, Part 2. Mm -hmm. Also, if you guys all are listening and you also happen to listen to Flash TV Talk with Bo and Bell, I am quoting directly from a lot of stuff that I heard in the episode today. So, take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> right. No, it. I mean, it makes sense. They, you know, left on uh, a finale that felt incomplete. I mean, there were things in there that it kind of felt like it. Uh, they had like they had some elements that that could work for a finale, but it definitely overall just wasn't uh, uh, something that was. Uh, you you could tell that it wasn't planned. Oh yeah, you definitely. Know. And but what what do you expect? You know, you got shut down months ago right when they were trying to finish off the season when, when all the polishing and whatnot would have been going on on the episode that ended up being the finale. Um, these episodes that are referenced in, in the trailer 
were obviously meant to come out after the final episode of The Flash. But you have to admit, and they said, Bo and Bell said it when they were uh, do when they were when they released the episode, which I didn't get to listen to till today. A couple weeks later, um, they did for uh, the DC Fandom uh, event that took place a couple weeks back. They put together a great trailer for the Flash, based solely on what they had available to them. Mm-hmm. And you can get a feel for what's coming up. Like, obviously, you got the Mirror Master arc uh, getting some more more play. Um, Top's coming back, and uh, we're going to see some interaction between her and Cecile. That looks like it could be very interesting. Uh, so that's who that was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she was around with the original Mirror Master. Uh, before mm-hmm. they went all crisis. Right. I know I was uh, I was wondering about that. But that's uh, that's good that they're bringing her back. Um, and again, like, anytime they bring back some of the villains that they have in their past, I, I'm always for that. Mm-hmm. And uh, just because of how much damage the villain of the week has. Uh, program did to the show yeah that's that's why the the whole the whole crisis thing was it was a great soft reboot for the show because you could bring back old villains like they did with with uh Hartley Rathbone or Pied Piper bringing him back giving a, a little bit more background into his character and how it things went in the new timeline having him around saving his boyfriend first time we've seen him with a boyfriend so you know, character development there. That was mm-hmm. cool. Yes. We got to look at some Godspeed uh, going on in the in the trailer. So he's obviously coming back for at least an episode, hopefully more. Maybe teeing up some uh, season seven Godspeed goodness. Some. Back to uh, Speedster versus Speedster. Got uh, the creation of the artificial speed force, which Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's going to blow up in their face. Because you can't... I'm sorry, you can't follow Eobard's designs and not have it benefit Eobard somehow. Unless it's based on love. Eobard's designs are not based on love. They're based on what's best for Eobard. Right. No, and we definitely uh, saw a glimpse of uh, Chester having some sort of um, power moment. Yeah, and there's going to be some sort of problem going on with the involving Chester. We get a hint of that. I mean, it, it's a it's a good trailer. There's there's a lot to look forward to. It's just a matter of when in 2021 are we talking January? Yeah, January. I'm all for it, but probably not. Late January, early February, I, I would guess. Comes down to what they can do, and how the restrictions in Vancouver really shoot are in regards to COVID. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I think they shouldn't have called this season seven. I think they should have just called this season 6.5. Or season six, the return. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lots of different things that we could have uh, called it, but it's going to be all blocked to season seven. You know that as well as I do, because they, they can't have that much of a gap between when shows come out. Not that it's un- not precedented. I've seen uh, shows and put out two special episodes to tie up all the loose ends months after the last episode before that aired. And... Uh, 
I think um, Mystery of Science Theater actually had an episode that aired um, after the finale. That was an episode that was meant to go earlier, but they didn't get the rights secured until after the finale aired. Uh, <clears throat> what I was actually referring to is a show called Timeless. It's a time travel show, which is perfect to reference during The Flash. Mm-hmm. But what they did was they left things on a on a cliffhanger. And then months later, they just picked up right where that cliffhanger left off and finished the series. It was one of those shows that it was a new show that came out and uh, it was really popular during its first season, but ratings dropped off during season two. And it was obviously meant to um, continue on further than that, but they were canceled. But due to the nature of the show, I think I think the last two episodes may have just been Netflix released in order to tie up the loose ends. So if you want to go check out Timeless, it's a really good show and they do tie it all up. The whole story from start to finish does uh, does get its get its play. Now that's a, I know not every show gets that uh, kind of benefits to it so it's nice that they were given a chance to to wrap the story up for the fans of the show yeah i was sad to see it go because they could have done so much with that and it was great too because they they weren't going back and trying to fix alternate timelines once the timeline was altered in the show the timeline was altered in the show now I alluded at the beginning of the show that we needed to talk about some things related to the Flash. I'm specifically referring to the Elongated Man arc because of the firing of Hartley Sawyer. Did I say that right? Was I right? Yeah. Okay. I I never knew who he was before the Flash, so the, the fact that I remembered his name, even after he was in the news for so, so long there... It's amazing. I should have normally I would have forgot. But poor Ralph Dibney. He's going to be recast. We don't know who. I hear from the guys over at Flash TV Talk. They got some uh, people in mind to um, give life to the character for a little bit longer. the The plan is, uh, according to either a tweet or something that was said during the Fandom event. And please don't quote me on this because it's really secondhand information coming from Flash TV Talk. I know it's out there that you can find it. I didn't have a chance to go and and verify it, but I know it's verifiable just because I know the guys that do that show and they know their sources. So, Elongated Man will be recast for season seven in order to finish up the storyline that was cliffhangered uh, during the events that you know caused COVID shut down and we uh, recast mostly due to the nature of elongated man's powers which we really were figuring was going to happen because he's, he's a rubber man he can and he's taken the form of other characters during the show before so we knew that was gonna, when it was going to come. And uh, from there, we'll see what happens. And if there is music coming in over the mic here on my end, I do apologize. It's coming from outside my window. Somebody was walking by with a radio or something or the phone on speaker. Uh. Or is it might get covered up by the background music? Who knows? It's a good point. So what do you think uh, of that, Greg? Uh, well, I'm not, bi- not a big fan. Um, I uh, understand the whole thing that they had to do with Hartley, which I still disagree with, but, you know, say la vie, it's out of my control. Um, 
But if you're going to go the entire way to recast the character and, you know, you're not sure whether that character is going to stick around, you know, like, I get it. Uh, Ralph Dibney isn't like, uh, he's not like on the same level as Superman. No. But he's been such an instrumental character these past few seasons, you know, that, and, and Ralph himself is, you know, still a an important character in the DC universe and everything. So for him to just kind of uh, disappear back to his own home planet uh, after being recasted and finishing up this uh, the storyline with uh, uh, Sue, that I think if that's the road that they take. Uh, I, I'm going to be really disappointed. Uh, I mean, I'm already disappointed to begin with, but uh, for that to be an extra, you know, thing done for this uh, character, uh, man, like that is really a, a motivation killer for me. Uh, you know, I get he's not the main player of the show, and. I, and you can look at a character like like Leonard Snart, uh, who, if they had kept him in The Flash as a villain, um, I think that it would have helped some of the seasons with him, his presence, you know, being a reoccurring character like he did in season one. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, and obviously his disappearance didn't really kill the show but uh i i feel like it hampered it with with ralph going away i think i, I think that's a, a major mistake on, on their part i got the controversy standpoint and everything and certainly they're going with uh a, a completely tougher direction with with batwoman so I have no idea what they're going to do with that. Yeah, um, and that that in and of itself is a is a huge <laughs> headache, and I, I'm so glad I'm not part of that show. Um, but honestly, like it's it's hard enough for me to be motivated to, to watch a show to begin with. With all this stuff, it, it's really they're they're really doing their hardest to push me away from enjoying the Flash. And granted, you know, Barry is still there. You know, Iris, it looks like, you know, major things are going to be happening with Iris and everything. Mm -hmm. But again, like I, I've just really come to enjoy Ralph's presence on the show. And think he added a lot to this. Right. But... Like, just personally for me, I... I just don't know how much I'm going to enjoy the show in a post Ralph Dibney flash. Yeah. And that was a concern that you brought up when we were talking about it before we uh, rebranded this show to uh, syndicated pipe club. You weren't sure how all this was going to affect your ability to uh, enjoy the show beyond right. this point. And, and uh, I, like, Sorry, one second. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be on there. Um, not because I'm bored of the conversation. <laughs> I'm tired. Um, uh, and I'm tired now. I, I can't imagine how I'm going to be in a few weeks' time. Um, I can. I, I, <laughs> I, I, anyway, I, just, I digress. Um, even the, in the trailer, like, Ralph Disney's absence from it, like, I felt it. Like, I really did. It was the... Uh, you know what's missing from this picture and it's a, it was that character and again it's out of their hands and everything but again it, it was their choice they're gonna have to live with it and and granted it was it wasn't an easy choice to be in but uh, it it certainly is going to affect my enjoyment of it so. For sure. 
to what degree, we just won't know until the episodes start rolling out. Right. That's a good point. But, uh, yeah. Maybe I'll switch to watching uh, Stargirl. Since that has, that actually has a, uh, um, a justice society in it, which uh, is something I've been wanting for a long time. Yeah. I don't think I can, as much as I, I'd like to check it out, I don't, are they, are they putting Stargirl out on the CW? Yes, I believe the first season is on the CW app, and then starting from season two onward, it's going to be a CW show. Okay. And, in, and, in, and in some Flash-related kind of wibbly-wobbly character, character kind of uh, connections, that show does have um, Icicle in it. Hmm. But obviously the, it's a different Icicle, different character. Obviously. They did the Killer Frost, but it's with an Icicle and Icicle Jr. So... Uh, Granted, Icicles doesn't even is to me he's not even on the level of like a Captain Cold, but uh, it's still that continuity is something that I appreciate. Okay, that'll be interesting. Maybe I can uh, an angle some some way to uh, to watch the first season. The CW app and whatnot doesn't work here in Canada. It's one of those things tied to the network and of course invisible borders right 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 you know gotta gotta prevent you from watching something from over here meanwhile once they put season two on air like my antenna outside will pick it up I'm not that far right. from the Detroit affiliate <laughs> right but um I at least appreciate that this show is doing something with the Justice Society I was excited when they made their appearance in Legends of Tomorrow season two, but and and really in retrospect, I wish they hadn't have even gone in there and done that because they really dropped the ball with those characters. Uh, and given the rich legacy that they have and, and everything, it's it was it was a disappointment for me. So to to see that they might do the Justice Society um, the portrayal that they deserve in this show you know given, I already like Stargirl as a character so uh, that's only going to make things more exciting for me and be even cool if they had a, a Jay Garrick in there with the, with the helmets yes yes it would the actual Jay Garrick with the helmet, not the Zoom Jay Garrick with the helmet. Right. And heck, they can even have um, uh, our, our Jay Garrick. Sure. The current one on the show. I think he would be, he'd be great as that. Yeah, get John Wesley Ship back in there. Get him back in the saddle. Make him the Flash mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Well, I, I hope that he's still... That would be another disappointing thing. I get that they, you know, they wrote, you know, his flash off into the sunset, but I, I certainly hope that they have Jay Garrick somewhere. Right. Speaking of things that were missing from the, the flash trailer, aside from one glimpse of Tom Cavanaugh as uh, Wells, they didn't elude to what they're going to do with the Mega Wells line. That's a good point. And that definitely needs some resolution. Yeah, because before the COVID shutdown, I remember on IMB, IMDb there was a, an episode that was coming up, uh, after, slated to come out after episode 19, episode 20, All's Wells That Ends Wells. And mm -hmm. we never got that episode, so I'm assuming it's going to be one of the episodes we get in Season 7. At least I'm hoping it is, because I want to know what they did with that mm -hmm. character, exhibiting all the signs of all the Wellses that are inhabiting that mind. Right. It'll be interesting to hear if we ever 
find out like if they had other plans for this season and uh, had to change them for this or if this was other than having to push it into the next season um, you know if there was any significant changes to what the end of season six would have been to how season seven develops right I'll bet you the first Comic Con back uh, when they have a if they have a flash panel, those questions will be asked. Mm -hmm. For sure. And now, just to speed things along, because we're running short on time, if you want to keep up with us throughout the week, you can always find me on almost every social media platform out there as at dr allen 201 you can follow the show on twitter at syndicated pipe greg where can the folks find you you can find me on twitter at uh the underscore badger piper or on instagram at the badger piper one word you can also check out our website uh fandompipes.wixsite.com slash syndicated pipe club and of course right here on youtube Link for the channel is in the description for those of you listening to the podcast. And be sure to subscribe to this channel and ring that bell so that you can be notified as soon as our latest video uploads. Also, be sure to check out our podcast version of the show available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, and also other Android devices. And if social media just isn't enough for you to get a hold of us, you can always get in touch with us at our recycled email, reverseflashtime at gmail.com. Well, Greg, that's another one in the books. Yes. Uh, we. It'll be interesting to see what they do with, uh, with the Flash, whether, no matter if I keep following it or not, uh, it's been an interesting ride. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, no, that was a, a good chat there that we had. Yeah. I'm planning on at least checking it out long enough to see how they resolve Season 6. Uh, I'll, I'll reserve judgment on Season 7 till it's actually time for Season 7 to be put out. And with that, everybody, have a great week. Good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next week. See you later.